How's it going, everybody? It's that time of year again, which we say with every holiday. It's Thanksgiving, the holiday of feasting. Another holiday where you're stuck being around family and friends you don't really care about, most of them at least, and you have to pretend that you're listening as to what they're doing or not doing with their lives, and you gorge yourself until you're about to pop, and then the next day, Black Friday, you fight strangers over Apple products that your kids don't deserve on Christmas. But that's neither here or there. I noticed a lot of people like to do these uh, feast meal preparations, or what I like to call the Thanksgiving flex. So I want to try my hand at that. Now I'm sure some of you are worried that your spread won't look as abundant or plentiful as others, but it's social media, it's all fake. So as long as you have the right camera angles and lighting, and you lay out your food in a specific way, it could look as show-offy as everybody else's. So the first step isn't necessarily the food, it's what the food is on. So whether you're using those big plates or the pots and pans or trays, if they look like crap, your food is going to look like crap. So make sure you don't go cheap. Don't serve on like those big paper plates. Don't serve on paper pots and pans. Don't serve on those scratched up chips trays. You know, bust out the good stuff. I'm not saying use the china, but the good stuff. Now I still remember as a little boy, my father having two rings. He had a skull ring that his great great grandfather carved out of silver. And then his second ring was a gold lion head that was just covered in diamonds and rubies and emeralds and crystals and just the whole shebang. And before my mother and father abandoned me at the tender age of 12, they didn't give me neither of those family heirlooms. What they gave me was plates. Now, I wasn't really appreciative of these plates because I was still a little guy. But once I finally celebrated Thanksgiving on my own, I came to appreciate what they gave me. Now, like I said, you have to use the good stuff. You don't have to bust out the china but the good stuff. So this is what they gave me. You see these suckers? Look at these. Look at these babies. Wow. Handcrafted uh, on the mounts of Olympus. Uh, painted with the finest of paints in Asgard. And as you can see, I mean, when the light hits it, it's like, wow. It's like, it's like platinum. So I'll, I already know that if I serve food on this plate, whatever I serve, it's going to look twice as better than yours. And I have four of them. Now I'm confused though, because they only gave me one jumbo size plate. I mean, look at this thing. It covers my entire head. I don't know what happened to the other three. Maybe they were used in a gang fight. I mean, I am Hispanic. But I managed to to keep this in pristine condition. Let me give you a close up of that. See that? Wow. Oof. Beautiful. Luckily this year, I don't need to use any pots or pans or trays, but if y'all are using those, word of advice, use plastic scoopers or silicone, whatever it is. Don't use metal because you know you have those stupid ass family members with their stupid ass kids who have to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom and of course they're not going to reimburse you so make sure you don't use metal and now on to the most important part number two the food let me show y'all what i got Lunchables. I know everybody's laughing, ha ha ha, but it's only gonna be Nale Bjorn and I, and we wanted to show y'all that even if it looks like you're trying to make 
a mountain out of a molehill, as they say. Even with scraps, you can still have a, a plentiful, satisfying feast. Now, I just want to say that um, this video is not sponsored by Lunchables in any way. In fact, I haven't had a Lunchable in about a decade and a half at least. Maybe even two decades. So I'm hoping, I mean, I don't remember how they taste back then. I'm sure they were not amazing, but I'm hoping they don't taste like crap. If you don't mind, I'd just like to sidetrack for a second. Don't you hate it when things that tasted really good as a kid taste like crap now? Like, I remember every time I had a stomach ache, I was so excited to have Pepto-Bismol because it tasted like cotton candy. And then a few years ago, I had it again, and it tastes like toilet water mixed with mop bucket water. It tastes like boo-boo. And I just find that unacceptable. I'm sorry to digress. Back to the food. Okay, now that you're done laughing at this, let me show y'all what I'm working with, okay? Extra cheesy pizza. It comes with uh, what they call cheese, what they call tomato paste with the stale bread, one airhead, that's it, and a Capri Sun, the Pacific Cooler flavor. I got chicken nuggets. It comes with one, two, five of them with a box of strawberry nerds and the fruit punch Capri Sun. I also got the nacho cheese dips and salsa. Ooh, I'm so spoiled. Uh, it comes with one Kit Kat, probably just like one wafer and the fruit punch Capri Sun. I got the ham and American cracker stackers. That's kind of racist. Uh, it comes with what they label as ham and cheese with a few crackers, a chocolate chip cookie, which is probably stale, and fruit punch Capri Sun. They really love those. And of course, it's not Thanksgiving without turkey. I got the turkey and cheddar cracker stackers, which comes with one peanut butter cup and the Pacific Cooler Capri Sun. And I just want to just ask to any people at Lunchables, whatever company handles it, who the hell are these characters? These suckers were not there when I was a kid. I just want to know who thought of it. They're terrifying. I mean, I love, I think that's a jackalope. Yeah. Is that right? Or a jackrabbit or a hare, whatever. A rabbit and a platypus. It's just so random. Anyway. So that's what I'm working with. And you may think, wow, that's, that's, that's literally scraps. I'm gonna prove to y'all that this is a feast. So the first step in my meal preparation is to open the boxes. So I got two Pacific coolers and three fruit punch. And from what I can remember, these pouches stayed relatively the same size. If you have any kids, please let me know if maybe uh, these pouches shrunk a little bit. I'd like to know. Now let's take a gander at these portions. These are the chicken nuggets. Pretty small. I don't understand how this could fill a child. These are the nachos. They look crappier than gas station quality. This is the, I'm assuming, ham. It kind of looks the same. I got two chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, they spoil me. Here's the turkey. Same as I remembered. And of course, everybody's favorite, the pizza. Stale as ever. Okay, now that we know the portions, it's time to strategize as to how they will look on the plate. So I figured for the pizza, the turkey, and the ham, we'll put them on the big plate. And then for the 
nachos and the chicken nuggets, we could leave them in the tray, the trays. That way the dips are right there. Cause if you try to lay it all out, it's just not gonna work. So there we go. That was the hardest part. Now it's time to lay these out on the big plate. <sighs> now that that's done, it's time to put this bread on the table. And I must say, I think I outdid myself this year. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present to y'all the ultimate Thanksgiving flex. Boom. Y'all thought it couldn't be done. But y'all don't know what I can do. What do you think, Nolly Bjorn? Exactly. You're welcome. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by. I hope all of you have a happy Thanksgiving. And hopefully only one fight breaks out between the family. And remember, try not to rip each other apart on Black Friday. It's not like your kids deserve the presents anyway. So yeah, uh, I'll see you next time.